Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this month's NACVA YouTube Live broadcast. I'm Brian Jones, the Chief Operations Officer and Executive Vice President for the NACVA, the National Association of Certified Evaluators and Analysts, and the Consultants Training Institute. This month's topic is a really cool one. It will be a discussion with Laurie Mastin and Peter Laurie about the university credentialing program that we've had in place for a number of years where students enrolled at colleges, universities in the MBA or graduate program can earn or work towards earning the Certified Valuation Analyst CVA credential through the NACVA. Laurie Mastin is a 10 or 15 year plus instructor in the Certified Valuation Analyst training program, also a prior um, chairman of NACBA's Executive Advisory Board. And Peter Lowry is very active in New Jersey, teaching this course at Montclair State, and also active with our state chapters. Both of them hold the CVA. And I should say Lowry has been um, teaching this program at the University of Denver previously. So hello, Lowry and Peter, thank you for joining us. Hey, Brian. So we'll start with the basics. The CVA program itself is a very comprehensive training to um, fundamentals, techniques, theory, methodologies, and approaches, um, and standards, compliance issues to performing a business valuation for privately held companies. It's a very comprehensive program that NACVA has been offering since the early 90s. Uh, we've We've worked with these university partners to create a turnkey um, program that these universities have been um, implementing. And Laurie, um, particularly, you were very instrumental in helping us to devise this program initially. Uh, can you just briefly talk about the training itself and how we have um, made this program something that can be implemented at the university level? Sure. Um so just you know kind of in brief what happens at the university level is the same thing that happens at the training center it's just on a different timeline and the delivery is slightly different because instead of being a week long of training you know eight nine hour ten hour days an exam on saturday and a report that they get you know six weeks to write or 60 days um, at the university level, we convert it to fit the university format. And so if you're, you know, University of Denver, for instance, is on a quarter system. And in a quarter system, you have 10 weeks um, for each quarter. So we break up the content into 10 weeks. We have, you know, four hours each week with the students, 40 hours, same amount of time we have at the training center. And we kind of parcel it out and deliver it a little bit differently because at the university level, the students are accustomed to having a lecture, but also having exercises and homework and quizzes and exams. And so we kind of had to, you know, take a different look at how do we deliver the same content, have the students comply with the same rules, taking the same exam, submitting a, a, a report, et cetera, but do it in a format that is, you know, kind of more palatable at the university level. And, and, and actually, I'd like to talk to Peter a little bit, too, because what I'm accustomed to is that kind of a faster paced 10 week delivery. Peter, I think you get a little bit more time. What do you do? Yes, you have a great memory. Um, we have a traditional 15 week semester. Uh, so uh, the, the pace or the speed is it's modest compared to that in terms of the one week course. Um, and what it does, is it allows the instructor to spend time with additional uh, exercises they can do. I also provide certain uh, cases and readings. So uh, I teach it at the graduate level at Montclair State. So uh, the information and materials provided by NACVA are the foundation and the core. And the course is geared towards the outcome of all the students, hopefully passing the uh, CBA credentialing exam. But again, just to reiterate, uh, at, at a slower pace, we're able to implement and, and supplement, I should say, uh, some materials to add and hopefully make uh, concepts more clear to the students. Mm -hmm. So what the yeah, program Brian, entails, oh, go ahead, Laura, sorry. sorry. I was just going to add, you know, that uh, I don't want the perception to be that the students walk away with their CVA credential at that point. They still have to comply with the experience requirements. 
So they're, you know, in candidate status until they can gain the experience. So they use, they submit the demonstration for it. Everything's done. They just have to, you know, kind of like those who are getting a CPA license, they, they pass everything, they pass the exam, fulfill all requirements, but they have to wait on that experience before they can actually get the credential. Right, that's a very good point. So generally how this process works, and we've got almost a dozen universities participating in this program. Um, by turnkey, we mean that all of the curriculum for the CVA training, which includes the, the, the course manuals themselves, the PowerPoints, the exercises, worksheets, case studies, recorded video, are all provided to the faculty to use through the course of their term, in Laurie's case, 10 weeks, and, and Peter's, 15 weeks. They um, cover the core body of knowledge for business valuation, which certainly uh, prepares the students for the process of the valuation engagement and all the methodology and approaches behind it. Um, the universities then have the option to assign the demonstration report, the case study, to the students during the course of the semester or term, um, encouraging the students to submit the case study as the final exam. The final, those case studies are submitted to headquarters and they're graded by our exam and grading committee, which means they comply with our um, grading and credentialing process for the case study. Then if the students want to earn the CVA, they contact headquarters and schedule the proctored exam. They pay a student member fee. And to Laurie's point, um, they, if they pass the case study and pass the proctored exam, they can hold candidate status until they achieve either the CPA license or the two years experience or 10 business valuation matters um, to fully earn the CVA without the candidate status. And so uh, this program gets the students as close as they can to earning the credential. Um, and, I, and I appreciate you clarifying that uh, point, Laurie. What has been your experience with the students um, interested in valuation or learning about this profession um, and then considering pursuing it uh, further after their studies? Uh, Peter, what's your experience with your students? Well, uh, it's mixed, to be very honest. Um, we have students that, that take the course, uh, sign up for the course to take the course without really grasping what we're trying to accomplish um, it's part of our Masters of Science and Accounting curriculum. And so at Montclair State, uh, we have a forensic accounting certificate. Uh, so this course is one of the courses required uh, for students to get a forensic accounting certificate along with their Masters of Science and Accounting. Uh, I also have a, a contingent of students whom once they start taking the course, it opens their eyes and they become much more enthusiastic about prospects of, of trying to pursue a career in business valuation. And then the third set, at least from my experience, has been uh, that crop of student who's going in with the mindset, I already know what, I think I know what business valuation experts do, but I really would want to become one of them. So that they appreciate the fact that as both you and Laurie have pointed out, uh, we give them the opportunity uh, so that they can become, uh, not get a full CBA, but they would have the, the association with NACLA and hopefully will pursue the job requirements of the two years employment and or if they pass the CPA exam. Mm -hmm. What's been your experience, Laurie? Uh, similar, and, and it's interesting because I, I, at the University of Denver, it's also offered through the Master, Master's of Accountancy program, but we have finance students that come over and take it as an elective as well. And we have a couple of, um, uh, courses that are prerequisites to take in order to get here. So financial modeling, some of the key skills that are necessary before you can just jump in and get business valuation. But I think it's interesting that finance students uh, tend to have a little bit more, you know, bravado about, oh, I know what business valuation is all about <laughs> because they're accustomed to corporate valuation with public companies. And so it's kind of like an eye opener because it's like, oh, this is a lot different. And at the University of Denver, we require that they write the report and, and we give them segments, you know, kind of break it up into different segments as homework requirements throughout the semester or the, the quarter itself. So when they're done, they have their finalized report, they take the exam, everything's done so that we don't have to worry about them having time later to get that done. But it is interesting, the finance students going, oh, I know this. And then a lot <laughs> of the accounting students who are, are in the 
um, audit track kind of have a similar, oh, I know all about this, but they have this fair value perspective, you know, for, a, you know, compliance with auditing requirements versus private equity, private companies closely held. So I think, I think that's kind of a, a, a hurdle that I have to get around in the first few weeks with the students is this is not what you think it is, <laughs> mm-hmm. even right. though it seems plain on the face of it. <laughs> No, well, we have a number of universities participating in this program, Ryder University, Sacred Heart University, Montclair State University, where Peter Laurie teaches, um, Ohio Northern, University of Utah, University of Denver, where Laurie's participating, Washburn University, University of South Florida, Rice in Texas, Walsh, and most recently, American University um, has expressed intention just within the last week um, to, to support this program. So um, we are hoping that those of you who are members of the NACBA um, or, or not viewing this program, if you're interested in paying it forward to the next generation of business valuation professionals, um, perhaps with your alma mater, um, considering um, uh, reaching out to us and also to your university um, to present this as an opportunity for the students to become engaged in this profession. Certainly, um, it's, it's, it will give those students a competitive edge if they're really wanting to work in the financial or accounting uh, industries. Having a pathway to a certification or at least fundamental training will certainly give them that edge over other candidates when they're out looking for jobs um, in this industry. Um, Laurie, uh, Peter, any closing comments or, or feedback on, on this program? Um, you know. Just one or two. Um, first is that, um, honestly, as you're pointing out very accurately, um, the students' career paths can, can split up hard and move in widely different directions. But what I continue to uh, tell them about is that these, this course gives you a fundamental building block upon which you can frame certain situations, whether you're working for an accounting firm, whether you're working for a private equity fund, whether you're working, uh, you know, uh, for a corporate finance department. I think the course is fabulous because, again, it emphasizes the fundamental building blocks of what business valuation is all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Brian, um, just because I have the uh, kind of the opportunity to teach at the professional level, you know, the week-long training center that I've been doing, like you said, for about 15 years, Um, One of the things that I've heard consistently from participants there who are younger are um, comments relating to, gosh, I wish, you know, because one of the things I say is my background, and I mentioned that I teach this at the university level, and the feedback is, wow, I wish that when I was going to school, you know, these are recent graduates, three, four years out of college, that my university had this type of program. And the, the desire comes from, I think, twofold. One, making them aware that it's something that's out there to do other than mm-hmm. audit and tax. And also just that the underpinnings of once you're in the professional environment, it's very hard um, early in your career in those first five, seven years to take the time that's required to go through the course, go through the training, write the demonstration report, et cetera. And the, that it's just easier to kind of accomplish that at the university level before you're a full-time professional. It's less expensive mm-hmm. because you're sure. not giving up, you know, if you're doing it voluntarily, you're not giving up your paycheck for a week. You know, the expense of doing it is, is just, a, you know, a little bit different perspective. And, and I think that's really important because the, the RICE program actually started from somebody who was in one of the training centers and I had this mention and they're like, I want to see if we can get this somewhere in Texas. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I'll also mention that there is no cost to the university to integrate this program. Um, we provide the curriculum, the guidance for those of you who are interested. Um, it certainly is a lot of material to cover and grasp and also teach. So we, offer, we provide the opportunity for the, the professors who are teaching this program to attend our public training so they can be mentored and coached by our core faculty, which Laurie is one. Um, we also can partner with our local state chapters to bring in experts if needed. 
Um, in fact, through our state chapter program, we are launching an internship uh, program where our state chapters will uh, support these universities, inviting them on campus for a career day where they can further talk about the opportunities and careers in business valuation. Um, the, the association has just launched a job board um, so that generally um, professionals can find work or if you're in your firm looking to hire, you can certainly post job announcements to our job board, but another element to that job board will be intern opportunities. Because that's something we're also hearing from these professors is it's great training and great you know, teeing up these skills for the workplace, but these students also want to have a sense of where will I find a job or how can I get internship experience and that's another level of this credentialing program that we'll be rolling out with this year. So um, you guys have been doing a wonderful, wonderful job. Both of you, thank you so much. Um, and for those of you who are, who are joining, um, Chenda, you can certainly place up the, um, the, what, the slide now to our Academic Support Headquarters website. <laughs> this is where you can go and learn a bit more about this program and sign up to receive details. Um, what we've discussed here is summarized on that page. Um, if you're interested in, in paying it forward to the next generation of valuation professionals and contacting your alma mater um, to start the dialogue about engaging um, this, this program for those students, please let us know. We'd be happy to support you. And uh, thanks both of you for spending a few moments with us today talking about this program. Certainly. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll see you next time on the next edition of the NACVA YouTube Live. Have a great rest of your week.